Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Penang pork satay. That's right, you've had beef satay and you've had chicken satay, but I'm hoping you have not had pork satay since I really want this recipe to be your first time. All right, that's how good this is. And by the way, I've never been to Penang and I'm only calling it this because we're using ingredients typical to that area. So to be clear, I'm not saying they make something like this in Penang, but I am saying that they could. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping some turmeric, which we usually use in this beautiful golden powdered form. But I actually found a piece of the fresh root, so this time I thought I'd use that instead. And I'm not sure if we actually have to peel this for a marinade, but if we do, the easiest way is just to scrape it with a spoon which I'm doing in a paper towel here to avoid staining my hands too bad. Although a little staining is fine, because when people ask us what it's from, we can tell them about this recipe. But anyway, once we have that skin scraped off, we can go ahead and give this a quick slice before transferring it into our food processor. And of course, if you can't find the fresh root, we will just use the powder. It's gonna work fine, and I'll give you the measurements. And by the way, that spoon scraping trick also works great for ginger, which we will also add some of. But a spoon will not work on the shallots which we will have to peel and slice with a knife and toss those in as well, along with a whole bunch of peeled garlic, followed by some brown sugar or palm sugar if you have it, but you don't. And then we will spice this up with some kind of ground chili powder. And I went with ancho, but anything will work. We will also toss in some ground coriander, which fun fact is actually from the seeds of the cilantro plant. We'll also toss in a little bit of chipotle, plus of course a little kiss of cayenne, and then as far as our liquids go, we'll do a little bit of rice vinegar, as well as some nice soy sauce. And by nice, I mean not low sodium. We will also sneak in a little bit of Asian fish sauce, or as it's called in Asia, fish sauce. And then our one semi-exotic ingredient, some tamarind paste, which is basically from a tropical bean-like pod, which is sort of sweet but intensely sour. So a little bit goes a long way. And that's it, we will finish up with a handful of cilantro, at which point we'll take this and process it or blend it until we have a fairly fine ground paste like this. And that's it, as soon as that's accomplished, all we need is some chunks of pork to mix this with. And today I'm gonna to be using a big beautiful piece of fatty pork shoulder, also known for some reason as pork butt, which I think has something to do with it once being stored in barrels. But anyway, we'll go ahead and cut this up. And for this, I generally don't trim off too much fat, but if you do see a large solid piece, you can go ahead and whack it off. And as long as you're fairly consistent, you can cut this into whatever size pieces you want. Okay, because we want them to cook at roughly the same rate. And personally, I shoot for something about an inch and a half square, or as close as I can get it. So I went ahead and cubed up just over two and a half pounds as shown, trimming off some, but not much of the fat. And then once that's set, we can transfer it into a large mixing bowl. And we will sprinkle over a generous amount of salt. Which, as I like to mention, because I'm using a large crystal kosher salt, always looks like way more than it is. So please, save your cards and letters. And then, what we'll do is go ahead and pour in our marinade. And then get in there with two clean paws. And then mix and massage this until it's perfectly coated. And then what we'll do once we're sure this is very, very well mixed, is go ahead and cover the top with plastic. And then transfer it into the fridge for anywhere between 4 and 18 hours. And if you're keeping score at home, this time I did mine for about five. And that's it, once our pork has experienced the sensation of that marination, we'll go ahead and pull it out and impale it on some kind of skewers, either bamboo ones we've soaked in water or some metal ones like I'm using, which is probably a little easier, albeit less authentic way to go. And there's really only two things you have to remember as you're doing this. The first is we want the pieces of meat touching, but we don't want them pressed and squished too tight together. And then the second more important thing is do not stab your hand doing this. So we will go ahead and skewer our meat, at which point we are ready to grab some tongs and head to the grill. But before we do, one quick reminder not to throw away the excess marinade. Because if we want, we can go ahead and brush some of this on while our meat's grilling. Which, by the way, is perfectly safe as long as the meat gets cooked after the application. All right, so don't brush this stuff on the meat after it's cooked. That is a lawsuit waiting to happen. But anyway, let's go ahead and head outside and place these down over some beautifully hot smoky coals. And once we have those placed down, we're gonna cook them for about 10 minutes per side or until cooked through. And as usual, the time I'm giving you is a total guess. 
right? So don't go by time. Since your pieces of meat might be bigger or smaller, or your fire is hotter or not as hot as mine, and a good rule of thumb for this is do it until the meat just firms up. Or if it feels kind of soft and springy, let it go. But once it just starts to feel firm, it's probably done. And as I mentioned, after we turn it, if you want to brush it with some of that excess marinade, go ahead. That's never a bad idea. Plus, if you have a bunch of people standing around your grill watching you, this is never not a great look. And there's a pretty good chance you're going to end up getting tagged on Instagram. But anyway, to recap, we will cook that for approximately 10 minutes per side, or until we're sure it's cooked through, at which point we'll go ahead and pull it off and head back inside, where happily we do not have to let it rest. Which really is great news because this stuff just looks and smells insanely good. And you're going to want to tuck into that as soon as possible. Which I'm going to do right now off the plate. And that, my friends, is one of the most delicious pieces of pork you will ever taste in your life. And I really could have just stood there eating the rest. But I went ahead and plated some up next to some cucumber salad and peanut sauce. So I could take some pictures to use as clickbait. And then I continued on eating and thoroughly enjoying. I mean, this stuff just has all the flavors. All right, sweet, sour, spicy, aromatic, smoky, and intensely savory. And not to brag, but over the years we've done many gorgeous and very delicious grilled pork dishes. But I really can't remember any of them being as delicious as this one. Oh, and I should mention, this would have been more authentic if we had added a little splash of coconut milk to the marinade. But I didn't one time, and I loved it just as much. So truth be told, I didn't want to open up a whole can just to use a little splash. But having said that, suit yourself. I mean, you are, after all, the Marvin Gaye of your Penang pork satay. And I've actually heard through the grapevine that the coconut milk can help tenderize this even further. Although this really was beautifully tender as is. And yes, of course, if you want to make this more of a meal, or you're doing one of those new trendy high-carb diets, this is absolutely fantastic on rice. And by the way, if you do use pork shoulder, there's certain parts of the muscle that are going to stay pink even when it's cooked through, which I think the piece I just cut into is. So don't let that throw you, it's fine. Oh, and you know how sometimes I'll say the salad is just a prop for these videos? This time it is not. Go find one of our cucumber salad recipes and make it with this. And same for the peanut sauce. But anyway, that's it, what I'm calling Penang pork satay. If you're looking for something new and exciting for the grill, this one checks all the boxes. It's easy, beautiful, intensely delicious, and has a very catchy name. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give it a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.